What is going on guys and welcome back to another video. So today I'm going to be discussing something that I've been eager to, to talk to you guys about for some time uh, and that is my new venture. Um, so without giving too much away, let's get into this video. Alright guys, so as you have seen by the title of this video, um, I have indeed quit and I am moving on to Pastures New. Now before I get too much involved in talking about myself and in talking about my new journey, um, I want to quickly look at and address the whole topic um, of quitting, because often it is considered to be quite negative when it doesn't have to be. Now often there are quite negative connotations around quitting. Often quitting leads to, and people think about quitting as being something um, quite negative. Um, you might think of it as being a sign of weakness or even as it might even be considered to be cowardice to quit. But that's not necessarily the case. Now the way I like looking at quitting is there are two main ways that someone can quit. One of them is definitely a, a sort of a sign of weakness, um, but it's not something to be frowned on or to be looked down upon, but instead to be sort of mentored and to be supported. Now this quitting is something that someone might do if they get find that they're struggling at the first hurdle, if they get challenged by something, and instead of working through that fear, um, and instead of working through that hard work, they decide, no, this is too much, I'm, I'm quitting, I, I don't want to, to, to do it. And instead of looking down on someone that does that, the best thing to do is to try and support that person, is to try and help them. Um, but that is definitely one of the biggest things that people look at when they hear that someone is quitting. Now the second thing is um, actually liberating yourself by quitting. So if you're in a position that you're struggling with, or if you're in a position of potential weakness currently, or you're not happy, and you find that you need to move on to make yourself happier, to work harder, whatever it may be, then you're naturally going to have to quit. And essentially it's the same thing. The only difference is rather than quitting because you find something hard, or you're scared of something, or you're fearful, or something is challenging, you're quitting because you see that there is more opportunity in the future. And you're taking those opportunities, and you have to leave what you're currently doing in the past because it's not fulfilling your best potential. Now if you're in a position where you uh, are really enjoying something but you're getting a bit scared about the commitment or you're getting a bit scared about um, the, the new opportunities that are coming up and the, the idea of quitting has gone through your head, I implore you now to think twice. I have been in that position a couple of times myself um, and there have been a few things in the past, especially when I was younger uh, and it was almost easier to quit um, and, and I do regret it to a, to a degree. Now none of those things were fundamental. Um, I'm talking about little things like um, playing the drums when I was a kid, uh, quitting because I wasn't allowed to have a drum kit rather than quitting because I wasn't good at it or whatever it may be. None of which actually affects my adult life now. But there's also been things in my adult life that I've come across that I've been like, this is getting a bit scary, this is getting a bit real. Um, and that could be anything from a hobby, a relationship, work. Uh, and, and I implore you to try and push past that fear. Because I can assure you, if it's something worth working for, and if it's something worth um, going through a bit of fear to achieve, you will be so much more thankful and it will you will feel so much better in yourself once you've completed it and you've pushed past that fear and you've worked hard to get it um, than you would if you'd have just quit. Uh, and a big part of the reason is because people are fearful. They think that they're going to get embarrassed. They think that they're going to mess up somehow. Um, but there are only, the only way to tell is if you to work hard and you try and achieve it. Uh, so please, try not to quit at the first hurdle. Now the second line of quitting, as I've already just sort of briefly mentioned, is if you're trying to better yourself. Um, now, I cannot recommend this anymore. If you are unhappy in your current position, like you need to find something new, you need to do something different in order to be able to make yourself happy. Because we only have one life, and although like it's very cliche, like you need to make the most of the life that you've got, because some people aren't as fortunate as you are. Now, what you need to do, um, and this isn't like a golden rule, is if you find that you're unhappy, like start trying to make a difference, start trying to do something that's going to change that so that you guys are enjoying yourselves and enjoying what you're doing. So, okay guys, why, why did I quit? Because that's ultimately what, not what this video is about, but that, you know, I'm using myself as an example, uh, an example here. 
why did I quit? Now I quit for the second reason. I quit because um, I found that for various reasons I wasn't particularly enjoying the position I was in um, uh, and I was no longer excited to get up in the morning to go to work and um, that is not what I consider to be a success. Now when someone is successful, success is one of those things that is often associated um, and is bracketed with financial gain. Now, when you look at success and you look at what you would consider a successful person, um, there are different successes in different parts of your life. So yeah, sure, you may well be financially successful, but are you emotionally successful? Um, do you have nice friends that are supportive? Do you have a good family base? Are you, do you have a good relationship with somebody? Um, you know, do you find that you are enjoying your social life? Have you got lots of hobbies? Because if this is not the case and it's just that you've got financial success, like, doesn't necessarily reflect your success overall as an individual and as a person. And this is what I often try to look at myself in my own life. For me, success is, uh, one, having my own mark on something, being able to produce something that's mine. Yeah, financial success does come into it because you need to be able to support yourself and having a certain amount of disposable income, so income that you can fritter away on things and it doesn't really affect your current position, is obviously nice. But it's also really important for me to be happy, to love what I'm doing, uh, and to have the time to be able to go out with friends, to go out with family, to, to, to pursue other ventures that I potentially have. When I first started my, my job, my career up here, um, I had all those things, like I was happy, um, I, you know, I, I didn't care too much about my financial standings because I was confident, I was comfortable, um, and I loved it. Uh, but, you know, times change, uh, and as time's gone on, that has changed, and I knew that as soon as that changed, I needed to do something about it. Now to give you guys a bit of a potted history of myself and my life, uh, to give you, to put it into perspective as to where I'm coming from, um, when I was at school, my intention was I wanted to become a chef. Uh, I loved cooking, I loved um, going home on the weekends and cooking with my mum, I loved baking, um, I loved eating food, um, I loved going to the markets, all sorts of things like that. And so in my head, I wanted to be a chef. And actually, in my end of year book, so those things that you get when you leave school, one of the, uh, the comments that I had in it was, um, most likely to, and my name was down next to, most likely to write his own cookbook. Now... When I went into college or looked into doing A-levels, I kind of had this idea that, well, I, as much as I love cooking, I also love going out and doing adventurous things. And um, being a chef, you often are working at sort of sociable times of the year, times of the week, and times of the day. So, you know, you're, you don't necessarily have time to meet up with friends in the evenings because you're working. Uh, you know, around Christmas, when you would like to be going out to the Christmas markets, you're working because lots of people like eating out at that time of the year. And so I decided, okay, and perhaps this is not for me. So what else can I do? Now, at the time, I was also fairly heavily involved with diving. My dad is a scuba diver instructor, and so he got me into scuba diving. And I kind of had this sort of light bulb moment where I thought, why don't I look into sort of the more geography, biosciences, and see if there's something there for me? And so what I did was um, I decided that I was going to sort of pursue geography um, it, whilst I was doing my college and whilst I was doing A-levels. Um, and through that, I ended up going uh, to Trinidad for a 10-day conservation sort of expedition. Um, I went out to Trinidad. I met loads of sort of native like, local people out there. I stayed in guest houses. I tried local cuisine. I listened to local music. Like, um, uh, I, I even got to go down the beaches late at night and early in the morning, tagging the turtles, um, doing beach surveys, all sorts of cool things like that. And I had that sort of epiphany, that moment where I thought, this is what I want to do. Now, upon returning back to the UK, like I said, it was only a 10-day trip, um, I instantly started going, okay, well, how can I become sort of a conservation biologist? How can I get involved in conservation and wildlife and, and all that kind of stuff? And so I started looking, watching videos, all sorts of things like that. And I found that in order to do that, I probably needed a degree. And so what I did was I focused my efforts and my attentions on, on, on uh, my UCAS application in order to get into university. So it was in 2011 that I first started at uni. Um, because I didn't do any of the sciences or any of the maths for uh, A-levels at college, 
Um, I had to do an initial year as a sort of foundation degree where I did all the sciences um, and having passed that I then got enrolled um, on to an animal science degree uh, and so I, I did four years at university in Kent down in, in Canterbury uh, and I studied and it was awesome. I got so many opportunities, I managed to travel, I went to Africa, I climbed Kilimanjaro, I went out to South America, I met so many good friends, did so many different things, got involved in a lot of stuff and I had an amazing four years, it was fantastic. Upon finishing my degree, I kind of got to a point where I was like, wow, I love research. Like, I've got so interested in, like, looking at conservation and doing research. Like, I can't just stop. Like, I need to do something else. And so I was fortunate enough and I worked hard enough to get myself onto a postgraduate diploma course um, that was run entirely in Mauritius uh, with the, the Durrell, Durrell Group, the Durrell, Durrell Conservation Group. I will stick a link in uh, the bio of this video to the Durrell website. Uh, so you can go and check them out. Um, it was originally ran by Gerald Durrell, uh, a very famous conservation biologist, um, and, and Professor Carl Jones. Um, and uh, I spent sort of six and a half, seven months out in Mauritius doing lots of conservation. Now I'm not going to talk too much about it, but if you basically look into my, uh, my, my videos, my vlogs, I have got a whole sort of uh, selection, a whole playlist of videos from when I was in Mauritius. So go and check it out because you'll get to see everything that I did. Upon returning back to the UK, uh, like I said, I was in Mauritius for about six and a half, seven months. Um, I decided that I was going uh, to look for work. So I spent six months, I was in sort of part-time employment and various other, th other avenues earning money at the time. Um, but I needed to get myself that first initial job, that career. And after six months, I got given the opportunity by um, somewhere up here in Gloucestershire. That's where I live now. Originally, I'm from Brighton, the south coast. Now I'm sort of southwest. Um, uh, my first opportunity working effectively in a zoo. Now it's inappropriate for me to say exactly where, so I'm not going to, but I basically got an opportunity to work with wildlife, with animals, in captivity, promoting conservation to the public. Now as, as great as this has been, I got lots of opportunities while I was there, I did awesome stuff with the, with, with the animals in the collection, um, uh, I, I got involved in the education side of things, um, and as fun as it was, by the end of my sort of year and a half being there, because that's how long I was there for, um, I started to, the, 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 all three elements, the sort of enjoyment, the, the hard work, the financial gains, the time management, um, I wasn't enjoying it as much as I initially did, and so I knew that I needed to change. Okay guys, so it was at the point that I realised that I was no longer enjoying myself where I was before, that I knew that I had to make a change. Uh, and as I said, it, although it sounds very cliche, you only have one life, like what is the point in not being happy? Um, uh, and not being fully content um, by what you're doing. Um, I'm someone that needs new challenges, I need to be like um, excited, I need to be motivated and I need to work hard in order to just be happy. And so I did what it took and I needed to, to find a different avenue that I could go down. Now as soon as I found this I started doing job searches, I started to look into other modes of earning money, other modes of working um, and I basically spent the best part of a year looking at different sites, looking at different things. Now, it was during a school visit, so an external visit, when I was um, a part of the education team at where I used to work, um, that I was sat on the floor and I had that epiphany, that light bulb moment, when I had about 20 to 30 kids, children, young children, looking at me in absolute awe because I had an owl on my fist. Now, I went to this school, it was sort of coming up to the winter, um, it was very snowy, and um, I was sat on the floor, it was World Book Day, they were all dressed up as Harry Potter characters, so we had like, little Hermione's, Moaning Myrtles, <coughs> little Harry Potters, and I was sat there, with an owl, looking at them, and they were like sponges, and kids are, it's fantastic, they absorb everything, um, and so I was sat there talking to them, and I had little kids coming up, asking me questions about the owls, about what I did, and I was just like, why don't I become a teacher? So, um, for those of you that don't know, um, in the last few years I have been fairly involved in education. So, I teach the Japanese Jiu Jitsu Club here in Gloucester at the university. Um, obviously, I was the education officer where I used to work. And so, a lot of my life for the last couple of years has been sort of revolved around education and mentoring um, and informing people about certain things. And so, when I was sat there and I kind of thought, this is really cool. Imagine if I got to do this every day. Like, it kind of just made sense. 
So what I did was that day, that night when I got back home and I'd finished work, I went straight onto the computer and I looked at PGCEs. And for those of you that don't know what a PGCE is, a PGCE is basically a year-long course for, or it fills an academic year. Um, it's full of intense lectures, group work, it's full of going to schools and doing placements in schools. Um, and by the end of the year, you should be in a position where you, if you pass, become an NQT or a newly qualified teacher. Uh, and it's at that position that you can then start teaching your own class and you can, after a year or so, can become a fully qualified teacher. There you go guys, that is, that is sort of my new venture. My new venture is that as of tomorrow, because it's Sunday today, Monday tomorrow, um, I am going to be uh, enrolling or I have enrolled on my new PGC course. Now, although that I've used myself as an example, that's not really the whole point of this video. The whole point of this video is to show you guys that if you are in a position where you're unhappy with your current situation, um, quitting is not necessarily the end of the world. Um, if you are unhappy, um, although you will have, and you probably do have, unless you're young, financial certain financial goals that you need to achieve, um, if you've got uh, a mortgage, if you rent a flat like I do, um, if you uh, have kids, you obviously need to be able to support that still. Um, there are always avenues that you can do and you can go down in order to be happier and to achieve those goals that you potentially have for yourself. Now, to put this into perspective, um, I, my workplace where I used to work had no idea that I was intending to become a teacher, had no idea that I was preparing myself to, to go down this route uh, until the day I left, until I, I handed in my notice and I quit and I gave my month's notice. Now, um, for the last, I don't know, four or five months, um, having handed my application in, <coughs> I did the relevant things, I worked my ass off in order to be able to hit the targets I needed to successfully provide my application. I had to volunteer in schools and I did those on my days off. So for about a month I had no days off because I was working where I was working sort of during the week and then on my two days off that I'd normally have I was in a school volunteering, teaching kids and helping the teachers out in a primary school. Um, there were a few tests that I had to do. So in the evenings when I finished work, I'd come home, I'd get my laptop out and I'd start revising for them and started doing what I needed to do to be able to, to pass the tests. So anything, and as I said before, anything that's really good, anything that is great, takes hard work. Nothing good in life comes from being lazy and, and just having it given to you. It doesn't work that way. And so if you want to achieve something, you need to do what you need to do to be able to get there. Uh, and so hopefully my example of going from someone when I was a kid who wanted to be a chef to then figuring out that conservation was cool and I wanted to do that to now going on to becoming a teacher should hopefully prove to you guys that as long as you follow what you're passionate about and what you love and you put your absolute all into it, you can achieve great things and you can be exactly what you want to be with the work. Right guys, so I hope you guys have got something and take something away from this video. I don't want to sound like pompous and arrogant and make out that like I know everything you know I'm only 25 um, I, I just take the opportunities that are potentially there for me um, and, and if I think there's an opportunity there even if it's not obvious I, I pursue it um, uh, and so I've changed you know quite a lot when I was a kid I wanted to be a chef and now I'm become about to sort of go on to my journey to my route to becoming a teacher now if this is sort of resonates with you, you know, in any way, if you think that this is sounds familiar to you, if you are in a position and you're perhaps a bit scared or nervous to take that opportunity or to make that jump and to do something new, um, please leave a comment guys, uh, you know, let, let's, let's make this a fairly open uh, community, let's talk about these things because it's important, you know, um, not everyone is as confident uh, as other people and it, it is a big deal. So leave a comment below, I'll try and um, respond to anybody that leaves any comments about anything that I've said, about any queries that you guys have, make sure you, you like I say, you leave a comment. If you enjoyed this video, if it helped you, if you think that some of this does resonate with you and you can potentially use this information and this advice, then give this a big thumbs up. Um, and then, uh, as always, make sure you guys subscribe in order to get uh, new content and make sure you hit that notification bell in order to be able to find out when I'm posting videos. Um, now, like I say, I'm starting my new course tomorrow, so I will be uploading more videos about my PGCE, probably vlogs about it. Um, I, I'll also be starting the Jitsu Club back up again in a couple of weeks because all the students are coming back. Uh, and so you'll be seeing lots more videos about that. Um, and I, I, I'm probably going to be doing some sort of uni-based videos because obviously it's September now. People are going to be starting uni soon. Uh, and, and it's a topic that I, I know quite a lot about. 
So, as I said, guys, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. And until next time, peace out.